Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a long awaited boob job update. If you guys missed out on my first video, I did a vlog sharing with you the first 48 hours after getting breast implants. And that was this past February. So it's been roughly six, six months or so since having them done. So I thought this would be a good time to kind of spill the tea, share with you 10 things, roughly 10 things. I have nine things to share with you that I haven't really seen talked about in other videos. So if you guys missed the first video, I will have that one linked down below as well as in the card. All in all, it was a pretty like routine standard surgery for me. Nothing really crazy happened. I also want to share with you my favorite bras and products that got me through the first, I would say, few months, specifically like right after surgery because I had the hardest time finding bras that were comfortable and just felt good to wear right after surgery. Just to give you like a quick recap as far as like my implants themselves, I am roughly 110 pounds, 5'2". Prior to babies, I have two toddlers. Prior to them, I had a natural double D. When I saw my doctor, I basically told him I wanted to look exactly like I did prior to kids. So we ended up doing 405 cc's gummy bear implants that were from Sientra was the brand. They were placed under the muscle and I had a nipple incision. Those are kind of like the stats, if you will. I'll have the full detailed video down below as far as like my whole experience from the beginning. But I thought, again, it'd be nice to share some like kind of final thoughts on breast augmentation, boob jobs, to kind of help you out if you're on this journey. The first thing I wanted to mention that I was not expecting, although I should have, knowing my body, is that the bloating after surgery is crazy. If I can, I will have like pictures inserted as far as like what I looked like before and maybe stages, what I look like now to give you some more insight. When I got out of surgery, so mind you, I was on anesthesia. They had me on an antibiotic. They had me on a muscle relaxer, painkiller. And then I was also taking Singular, which is to help prevent getting a muscular contraction contractor. Mm, I'll put the like official name on the title, forget what it's officially called, but basically with the scar tissue around your implant gets super, super hard. So that helps prevent that. And I took that for three months after surgery. It's because of like all the medication I was taking, I got extremely bloated. I looked like I was three, four months pregnant. They did warn me ahead of time that the antibiotic would more than likely do that to me and that they recommended taking a probiotic. Just to forewarn you, if you're going grocery shopping prior to surgery to like make sure your house is stocked, get some good for you foods to help with your digestion just so it's not like a full shock to your system after surgery and you have some great foods in the house or a probiotic in the house to kind of keep things moving in your gut happy because you're gonna be going through a lot. Number two, and I kind of mentioned this in my vlog, I believe, is that in my sternum area specifically, I felt like there was fluid underneath my chest. Now they did pump a lot of like saline through my like breast pockets, I guess, to kind of flush everything out when they were making the pocket for the implant. I would say for the first 36 hours to 48 hours, I had this like popping sensation where I literally feel felt like I could push fluid around and it almost felt like the tiny little like bubble wrap but like super super fine I could like feel it it was mostly like up in here that I felt it I was that annoying patient that probably called the doctor's office three or four times just, just to make sure that everything was okay and nothing to worry about and that was one thing I called and they said that completely normal and it goes away within about two days and it's just the fluid from the surgery and that your body just naturally dissolves it on its own. Number three is pain. Now I consider myself to have a very high pain tolerance. I mean when I was in labor with my son I walked into the doctor's office five centimeters dilated and I didn't even know it. So I feel like I have a very high pain tolerance. I definitely underestimated the amount of pain that I was going to be in the first week. I highly recommend that you have somebody like with you taking care of you is really if you have young kids to help tend to them because you can't lift anything over 10 pounds I think for two to three weeks depending on your scenario. My restriction was two weeks I couldn't lift them for but I had somebody with me for three and a half weeks between my husband, my mom, my best friend, my brother. They did like a rotation to help me with 
the kids. Really the first two days, I even had difficulty like pushing a drawer in, just the whole muscle. Again, mind you, if you go over the muscle, you're probably not gonna experience as much pain as I did, but I really felt it like down my arm, through my armpit, and then this whole muscle was super, super tender. My implants were sitting so high, which is very normal if you go underneath the muscle because your muscle hasn't fully relaxed yet. So they're gonna sit super high because the muscle is pushing them up. Just keep that in mind as well. I do have pictures from the very beginning of them looking very square and super high up like where my collar bones are and you look like Franken boob. Like it's really, really bad. I would say they really feel like they're dropping and settling and looking more normal by the one month mark. And that's moving into like my next point is trust the process. I know that everybody's anxious to get back to work and get back to their exercise routine and just back to living their normal lives. Nobody likes to feel restricted or not themselves, but you have to trust the process. There was one point where I was like really going crazy that I couldn't tend to my kids like I wanted to. I couldn't exercise the way I wanted to, but ultimately you're gonna heal better. You're gonna feel better. They're gonna look better. You don't wanna strain anything during the process. So just trust the process. You just went through surgery, try and relax relax, try and take advantage of the situation and just take a moment to breathe and take care of yourself and your body, which is obviously most important. Speaking of healing, so the incision, one thing I also didn't hear a lot of people talk about, if anybody talk about, was the incision itself. I want to say around 10 days to two weeks, I had this like prickling sensation, numbing sensation, almost like, like if your foot falls asleep and that like rush of blood that goes back to that area, tingling sensation is the best way I can put it or like prickling is what the incision felt like. Again, I called my doctor's office if that wasn't a sign of like infection or something and they said no, that's perfectly good and healthy that the incision is doing that. That just means that the, the nerve endings are trying to line back up and figure it out like what the heck just happened and they're trying to heal. So it's basically just your nerve endings, nothing to be too concerned about, but obviously talk to your doctor if something just doesn't feel right. I was never shy to communicate with my doctor and I think that's also a great point if you're feeling scared about anesthesia, I know that was a very, very common comment from my last video is what it felt like to go under anesthesia. That was like one of the number one things you guys were scared about. And honestly, I was very upfront with my anesthesiologist. I had never been through that before. I didn't know what to expect. And she did a phenomenal job just relaxing me and just making me feel super comfortable throughout the whole process. So I think the more open and honest and communicative you are, the better your experience is going to be. Prior to having my boobs done, I was a stomach sleeper. I never slept in any other position but that has permanently changed, which was kind of sad that I had to find a whole new sleeping routine. They have you sleep on your back for the first couple of weeks. That honestly wasn't too bad. I was kind of nervous about the sleeping situation, but now I have to sleep on my side. It is not comfortable sleeping on my stomach anymore. I feel like I'm sleeping on balls of socks, really. So just be weary of that. If that is a deal breaker for you, you may not want to get your boobs done because I hate the way that it feels sleeping on my stomach. I had to figure out a whole new situation. I now sleep with like a king size pillow like in between my boobs to help my boobs like have something to lay on. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but it's the best way I'm able to get sleep. Just be mindful that your sleeping position may change, which some people may not care about. Other people that could be like a huge deal breaker. So I kind of mentioned this beforehand, but one of the other things is your mindset. So try to not freak yourself out too much, specifically about like sizing. The way that my timing worked out, I had a pre-op appointment where we went through like the fine details. I tried sizers on and figured out the exact size that I wanted. We took pictures that I could like take home and really like analyze and figure out what size I wanted to be. And then they call you to confirm like, okay, 
we're doing 405 cc's around the nipple um, incision underneath the muscle just to make sure they have you know they triple check everything and leading up to the surgery i was really really debating that going that big but keep in mind that 405 is going to look different on everybody my frame your frame your mom's frame it has a lot to do with the size of your chest how much natural breast tissue you have where your boobs like sit on your body so 405 is going to look different on you than it does on me. So with all that being said, I was scared that was going to be too big because it sounds like a lot, but honestly, I would not change a thing about the size. And I was having this conflicting battle in my head, but all I have to say is just trust your gut. Whatever you are happy with and feel content with and feel at peace with in the office, stick to it. Do not waver, stick with it. If you loved it then, you'll love it, hopefully, after surgery. But I would say 99% of the time, people love what they end up getting based off of what they tried on in the office. And I can tell you from those who have chickened out and gone smaller, people that I know of, they regret it and they wish they would have done the size they had agreed upon or even went bigger. So keep that in mind. Workout adjustment. So I'm a pretty active person. I love running the Peloton, lifting weights. I do have to say my workout or exercises did need some adjustment. So I no longer do push up, pull ups, running. I have to find a great sports bra, something very compressive where it's not going to hurt after you know a long run so do keep that in mind although it really didn't affect me exercise wise there are some tweaks and things that i just need to be mindful of or steer away so those were a couple things i did get a question a couple questions about working out on instagram and i do want to mention overall there was no real big like adjustment just no push-ups no pull-ups my doctors did say don't even bother doing chest exercises there's no point once you get your boobs done so just steer clear of chest exercises but that was really the only thing that i was told to steer away from from my doctor now the last thing i want to mention that i really did not hear anybody talk about so this took me a long time to get over is you can really feel the implant and that may seem kind of like obvious but being somebody who had naturally large breasts before i guess i had the assumption that i wasn't really going to feel it but i would say like really the under boob area is where i feel the implant a lot and i can almost feel like a rippling effect now you can't see the rippling effect it's just the implant that's kind of doing that when you touch it um, but I will say specifically on this side, so my left side, I can feel the implant shift around in different positions if I move an awkward way or while I'm exercising in the shower, specifically when I raise my arm. This side just feels a little bit different, but then again, I mean, your boobs are sisters, not twins, so things aren't going to be completely the same on both sides. They look exactly the same. They just feel internally a little bit different, but I was told by my doctor that everything looks and feels fine, so don't even stress about it, but it's just that mental switch you have to make that they're not natural, right? They can look great, but they're not going to feel 100% natural. Don't let it freak you out if you're kind of in that boat right now and you're like, oh my gosh, it's freaking me out that I can feel them. Just kind of live with it for a little bit and that should go away and settle in your mind because that's over time that's settled for me. But at like the three month, four month mark where things were looking a lot more natural, they weren't sitting as high, I was starting to freak out a little bit. Just to kind of put that out there, you're not alone. It is a little bizarre, but you'll be okay. Now for probably one of the things that you're most looking forward or intrigued about hearing is bras and some of my favorite products that really got me through up until now. So I'm gonna talk about bras, specifically for right after surgery. I'm not kidding you, when I probably tried like 10 or so different bras from Amazon specifically, but I also tried some other retailers and the favorite one that I have found for right after surgery is this one from Target from their Aiden or Auden line. So right after surgery, I was sent home from what looked like a nursing bra, if you guys are familiar with those. It's basically just a very thin piece of material. Nothing crazy, no wire or anything like that. I wasn't given like a compressive bra. It was basically just 
thin material but it was not the softest and i was on the hunt for something very very soft and this is the best one i've told so many people about it that have gotten their boobs done and it is a godsend so it's this very thin buttery soft it almost has like a cooling touch type of fabric it's a razor back bra it's so stretchy now mind you i didn't get a like incision underneath my boob so i can't really attest to like how comfortable it is around that type of incision but for it to be around my nipple my nipples were super 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 tender and sensitive and this was so comfortable i wore the heck out of this thing and there's really nothing to it but it's so soft it gives you the lightest support you'll feel great in it and just I couldn't recommend this one enough and I think it's 15 or 16 dollars so very affordable for a bra that you'll get tons of wear out of kind of similar to that I then was on free people because they carry a lot of different like light support bras bralettes things like that I have this specific bra in three different colors so this one's like a rusty orange but I also have it in black and a nude color so same kind of concept it's like that very buttery soft material this one is a little bit stiffer I would say but still very very comfortable I mean I have it in three different colors it has a scoop neck in the front there's no closure clasp in the back it gives good side boob coverage you can adjust the straps whereas the one from target you can't and these are a little bit more expensive mainly because they're from free people you may be able to find a dupe but these are the ones that i really really like and enjoy and wear on a daily basis so i would highly recommend these ones just for after surgery and then kind of like rolling into your everyday life they're just very comfortable you can wear them underneath white t-shirts you won't even see a thing specifically with the white one it's like an off-white so you won't see it underneath and yeah i just highly recommend these in general speaking of free people did pick up this like long line crop bra I mean it's kind of like a yoga type bra this comes in so many different colors I think this is part of their happiness runs collection it's ribbed it's super stretchy and even though I am more petite I did get this in a medium large versus a small medium because I wanted it to be very um, comfortable to lounge around in the house and, and not so compressive specifically after getting your boobs done the straps are pretty long but it is a square neckline they do have this in like a halter type style if that's more your thing but I really enjoy the square neck and it comes if I didn't already say this in tons of different colors so this is also really good option that you can also find on like Poshmark and Mercari people are constantly selling these eBay I think I actually got this one from so you can also check like sites like that if you don't want to spend full retail now my favorite bra is actually from lounge I don't know if you guys have seen them on Instagram or not they have gotten pretty popular and my ultimate favorite bra my husband teases me all the time because they were all the time is this red mesh you can probably see the bottom and I'll insert a picture over here as well as far as like what it looks like on this also does not have a clasp but this part right here is bamboo material so it's very very soft super stretchy it feels incredible on this mesh piece down here is very sexy this comes in tons of different colors it has the adjustable straps and there's like it's amazing I really don't know all else to say I really do need to get this in every color because then it could get me through every day of the week but I love this and it's so worth every single penny and then speaking of lounge I really don't wear wired bras anymore just because with implants you don't have to but lounge also has this is part of their mesh line this is a wired bra and I do like to wear this one from time to time um, but this one just says lounge across the fabric and if for being a wired bra it is very very comfortable and this also doesn't have a closure in the back but you can adjust the straps I believe I'll put my sizing down below but I believe I wear this in a small plus and I like that lounge has the option to do the plus with some of their sizing so that you get 
extra fabric but the torso is still the like right measurement but i will have all of those bras listed down below for easy shopping and then as far as like ice packs and whatnot after surgery so i really survived off of these target i mean they're not by target but i got them at target these ice packs that you can cut into different like dimensions and shapes where you can customize what it looks like in your bra. So I basically had like a piece that went all the way around because I had a lot of tenderness on the side. So those were amazing. They were super affordable. And I didn't think about this till after the fact, but if you're a nursing mom or if you've had babies, you know that I think Medela or Lansano, Lansano, carries these nursing cooling packs they're perfectly circle that you can fit in your bra which would have been nice to have i think at least in the beginning so i'll link those below as well if you're unfamiliar but my two holy grail products is this scar cream so this is from Ciantra, which is the same brand as my implants my doctor's office supplied me with this at no additional cost and it's called their bio Chronium. I don't know if you would be able to buy this online or if your doctor's office would carry this, but you could at least ask them. Now, the one downfall about this is this will stain your bras, your shirts, your tank tops because it leaves a oil stain. You can get oil stains out with Dawn dish soap. Just scrub it on and throw it in the wash and then you should be okay. But don't be shocked if you see oil stains, but it's so worth it. You can hardly even see my incision and it's all because of this. I think I applied it at least two times a day for the first couple of months. I don't really apply it anymore unless it's looking a little raised or irritated, then I'll apply it. But this stuff is incredible. And then last but not least, my doctor's office recommended that I take Arnica. I just bought this off of Amazon and they wanted me to take this at least one month to two weeks before surgery. And this helps take care of bruising. You're supposed to take, I think, four tablets four times a day. I am telling you, I had like zero bruising after surgery, which is kind of crazy to me that they're adding these big implants and you know, incisions and everything like that. And I almost had no bruising. And it's all because of Arnica. And if you read up about it, it even says on the bottle, 30 times bruises or muscle soreness. Talk to your doctor, look it up online, do some research, but this is a definitely a holy grail. I even take it now because I bruise like a peach and these help remedy the bruises quicker. With all that rambling, I hope I put you guys at ease or at least gave you some more insight as far as what to expect when you get your boobs done. Hopefully these products and these bras help you as well. If there's anything I didn't cover, if you have any questions, please, please, please do not hesitate to leave your questions down below. I love helping you if I can, um, or at least pointing you in the right direction. So please don't hesitate to leave your questions down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.